Hiya. Hey, I want to take a second and just uh, jump on, uh, before we jump into our, the message this morning, we're going to just look at two verses, Mark chapter 4, 13, and Mark chapter 4, verse 19. Uh, the booth does not have these. It just says uh, ad-lib deal. Sometimes when the Lord's talking about something, you need to stay on it just a little bit longer. <clears throat> and so we're going to do that this morning. And it says this in Mark chapter 4, verse 13. If you don't understand this, you're not going to understand anything that I say. This is what, that's paraphrased, Nate, 2023. Jesus said, if you didn't understand what I just told you, he just told the parable, and the disciples said, what does that mean? And he said, if you don't understand what I just told you, you're not going to understand anything of this. Any word. You won't understand. It's, let me read it verbatim out of the BSB, Brian Study Bible. Then Jesus said to them, do, not, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand any of the parables? This is this parable of the, the sower of the word and how the word of God is sown in hearts. What Pastor Evans spoke about this morning, she spoke about verse 19. And verse 19, it says this, that the seed... Uh, I'm going to start in verse 18. Others are like seeds sown among thorns. They hear the word, but but there's things that pop up. The worries of life. The deceitfulness of wealth. You know what wealth tells you? If you had this, you could be you would have you would have this. If you'd have that, you could have this. You'd have, you'd be happy. You'd be you know. And I was talking to uh, a friend recently, and I said, you know, you were, you were happy until you saw what somebody else had. Hello. It's like if I just handed somebody a $100 bill, you'd be like, hey, I just wanted to give you this. It'd be so awesome until you saw that I gave somebody else a 1000 Like, well, that's sad. Really, you just got $100? Like, we're just talking about living it with, in a life of things. Like, let's just talk about things. Like, I, mean, I, I didn't know I wanted a brand new blah, blah, blah until I saw somebody had that new color of that new Bronco or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? And so many times those things are, are causing a deceitfulness of riches, saying, if I had this, then this. Then not. And, but what's happening is this very thing. There's things that are being choked out. And there's words that are being exchanged for God's word over my life. And there's other words. This is, it's all about the words. See, seeds, what he's talking about, fruit that were to be grown, it came from a seed. This, these weeds are also words. Weeds are also words. Okay? Anyway, it says this. It says, But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke out the word, and it becomes unfruitful. We got back home. We had, uh, what a blessing. We had actually Miss Becker and her girls took care of our garden uh, while we were gone. We loved a garden. We have a, too large of a garden. We're going to simplify that next year. Um, but we spent uh, a good seven hours yesterday out in the garden. Um, got blisters and dirt under the fingernails and blister beetles. You probably don't even know what those are. They're from the devil. Um, they're, 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 anyway, they're, they're a, a, bu a bug about that long that has stripes on it. And if you crush it, it has a toxin that causes blisters on your hands. It'll kill, horse, it'll kill horses if it's an alfalfa when it gets bailed. Chickens can't eat them. Anyway, they're really terrible. They're called blister beetles. Anyway, and they like to become invasive and swarm. And last year when we planted the garden there, I don't know why, but they swarmed. This year while we were gone, same thing. Um, anyway, so we sprayed the, the night before with organic, which doesn't work as good as Seven's Dust. Um, just saying. So we, won't, so we don't do that. But anyway, so we weeded all day ye oh, yesterday, dug a bunch of potatoes and all this kind of fun stuff. I'm telling you all this to say, um, weeds noticed but not done anything. You might see them. You might know them. You might have just been told about them. But if you didn't put the application in, like what just happened today, with the words of my mouth, my God is my source. My, provide, my God provides all things that I need. Then it's like just saying, man, there's a lot of weeds in the garden. And why it was so important for me to spend that much time in the garden, I bought these watermelon seeds this year, like Jack Magic Beans Chalk or... They're like $1.15 a piece per seed. And I didn't want them going to waste. 
So when the boys looked at it, they go, Dad, just come on. Because they, they had to go mow. But they, I said, give me a few couple hours first, you know. And so we, we said, started and just worked our way through the watermelon patch. And uh, the reason why was because that seed was valuable to me. It's valuable. This is why I'm here today. This is why you're here today. Because this is valuable to you. So when other things get come in and, and try to choke it out, we, we put our hand to it or we put our mouth to it and we pull it up. We root out and we pull down. We tear, we tear out. We root out with the words of our mouth. And we say what God says to whatever those thoughts might be. It could be thoughts about your children. It could be thoughts about your health. When you have those thoughts, you say what God says. You tend the word of God and it will be fruitful. Amen. And so that's what this, that's what that was about. And that's one of the most basic things. You know, we we're oftentimes we let our, our tongue go unbridled, but that not out of, that should not be. Amen. And you know, the so cool thing is you can always just catch your tongue, right? It's like you catch it, just put it, put it back on it. And, and, and this is changing the steer your ship, right? All right. So we're going to get into the word this morning. I'm Excited in my heart to share with you uh, just some something that's so simple. Um, uh, I'm going to do just two standalone messages this week and next week, and then we have Joab. T- uh, he's going to be here end of July. He's a, the, one of the missionaries that we support. Really excited about that. Um, again, end of July, and then we'll be kicking something else off. Also, end of July, the 26th of July, well, Wednesday night, we have a summer night, and which is always a great time just to fellowship with with our church family. Again, Wednesday night, July 26th. So let's pray before we jump into the Word. Father, thank you for your words to us. They really are their life to us, and they do satisfy. We thank you for them. We thank you that we have eyes that see, we have ears that hear, and we're just asking you to speak to us with such clarity that we know your voice. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, the title of this morning's message is Taste and See. So I feel like that's what uh, has been the theme of, I, I'm going to just minister over these, these, these next couple of weeks from uh, my time of being away. So I was away for uh, actually over two weeks. I was only gone two Sundays, but I left immediately after Father's Day, went up and went fishing with some guys from church here, had a blast, and then my family met me up there to continue fishing. So I, I got my fill of fishing um, and just quiet time up north and uh, then saw my family up in Minnesota. So great time. But from that place of being away in those quiet mornings, um, this is what I'm going to speak on over the next couple, just two weeks. So this first one is taste and see. I could have called it stop and smell the roses, right? Sometimes it's, it's easy in life and, 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 and you know, even in uh, technology today, they say that the slowness, technology has gone as fast as man can allow it. In other words, uh, I think it was, um, uh, you've heard of Elon Musk. I didn't know I'd be teaching on Elon Musk today. Uh, really not. But he said this. He said the, the, we, went, we took a step backwards when we wait, went away from a computer to a cell phone. And, and people said, what do you mean? He said, because now we don't have five fingers. We have two. So that's why where you like, remember, remember the T8, remember, or, you know, okay, uh, where you could make more words with letters or you can now, they have the thing where you can just zig around on it to try to, to speed you up because we're too slow. Well, that's not just in computers, that's just society where it's pushing you, pushing, not leading, pushing you at such a rate that you you got to be like this, click, 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 everything so fast. We got to go here, we got to go here, we got to go here. And even to the point that our children are like, well, I want to join this, and 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 I got to do this, and I got to do this. And it just gets crazy, uh, our lives. And it's, it's just because the cult, the flow, right? How many of you know it's easy to get caught in the current? Yeah. It's so easy to get caught in the current. Um, but I, I believe that it, it would be good for us to just uh, slow down a little bit uh, on some things. Um, or just stop and smell the roses, or taste and see. So we're going to look at a verse there, uh, but I wanted to start out this uh, today um, with this, uh, these, these words from a song that was written a while ago. Um, and it says this, Hey there, mister, where are you going in such a hurry? This was like 1974. All right, maybe you've heard this. They, I'm not going to give you the title of the, uh, or the, author of this song, but hey, hey there, mister, where are you going in such a hurry? 
Don't you think it's time you realize there's a whole lot more to life than work and worry? The sweetest things in life are free, and they're right before your eyes. you got to stop and smell the roses. you got to count your many blessings every day. You're going to find your way to heaven is a rough and rocky road if you don't stop and smell the roses along the way. You're going to find your way to heaven is a rough and rocky road if you don't stop and smell the roses along the way. Anybody heard that song? You know, they don't write songs quite like that anymore. 74, 1974. You're going to find, and this is what I had, had, this this, the last line, you're going to find your way to heaven is a rough and rocky road if you don't stop and smell the roses along the way. The, the little things, the small things, um, not, not just talking about how the little things allow you. When you uh, if you ever stop and you smell the roses, it brings an appreciation, doesn't it? If you stop, you're like, oh, wow, look at that. It's so beautiful. Um, uh, my, my mom uh, loves morning glories, these, these flowers that vine up. And uh, I was given a bunch of seeds a couple of years ago, and I'd saved them. And, and I planted those giant mammoth sunflowers. And then every color of morning glory I could imagine or that I could find, even some I didn't know existed, and I planted them amongst uh, the sunflowers. And so when I got home, they were bloom, in bloom. So I got uh, everything from pink to red to deep purple to light periwinkle to just like all these colors. And you're like, whoa, that's cool. You're telling me all about these little details. Mm-hmm. It's amazing to look at what God has made. It's just uh, there's a joy in in something so simple that didn't, in a sense, it, I can't, I couldn't buy that. I couldn't create that. But God made that. The beauty in what God has done. And so I just, I really enjoy those kind of things, looking at what God has done. And so um, from that place, I, I just didn't want. Uh, I just felt like. As I, as I was going away, just asking the Lord you know, for ministering to me. But from that place also, um, I don't think when, where you're called to, you don't leave your call. You, I don't know that you can turn volume down, but you just you don't you can't leave. You don't disconnect from calling. Right. Um, anyway, that's where life life is found. And, and, uh, and it seemed like that that last line there. You're going to find that your way to heaven can be a rough and rocky road. And I know the Bible says that that in this world, I'm not uh, going to come here with a message that you're never going to have hardship. The lawnmower is not going to break. The fridge is not going to leak. Or we're, I'm not going to say that the tree in the backyard is not going to die, or you know, and you're going to have to do that. And that gets. I'm not saying that. I'm not going to say there's not going to be trials and tribulations in this. But I am saying that we're to be of good cheer. Right. The Bible says that you're going to have trials and tribulations, yes, but be of good cheer. Right, because I've overcome, and so it, the, the difference is is when I see uh, my the, the, those problems as overcome something that I'm overcoming versus something that's well, you know weighing on me, and I don't think we should be weighed a weighed down church at all. Um, I asked one of my boy, um, or actually my wife asked one of my boys, all of my boys, um, how, how how would you would you say you're doing on a scale of one to ten? On a scale of one to ten. And, you know, one person said, uh, and so it was just kind of a good conversation. You know, sometimes uh, maybe you could ask your kids, this would be a good one for teenagers, uh, peach pit. Give me your peach, give me your pit of the day. What do you mean, peach pit? Like, tell me the best part of your day and tell me the worst part of your day. Because how are you doing? Good. Well, it's good. Stuff. You know, that's about, <laughs> okay? So this makes you have to at least engage in a conversation, a little bit of connection. Um, but she asked, how, how are you doing on a scale of one to ten? And I think one said, um, Good. Uh, no, on a one to ten scale, where are you at? Uh, eight, uh, probably seven or eight, or, or I don't know, nine. I don't know, somewhere. Okay, eight. And then the other one said eighty, and uh, um, and she and she goes, so like you mean like no, one out of ten, not like one out of a hundred. So he goes, oh, uh, you know, eighty, and uh, and she's like, so you mean like way better than ten? He's like, yeah, like eleven, right? Like, but eighty, and I believe that's how God wants us to be. To live on an 80 scale, on a 1 to 10. Why can that not be? Worry. But let me ask you this. When you look around, when you look in heaven, are the trees, do they have fruit on them? The pear tree has fruit on it. The apple tree has fruit on it. The flowers are blooming. This, like, like there's just good all around. 
Well, let me just say, define glory for you. Heavy with all things good. You know that my expectation is to be one of expecting the glory everywhere I look so that I can live on an 80 scale on a 1 to 10? You're like, that doesn't make sense. I know. You, 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 you were put in a box of 1 to 10. Who put you in the box? Who put you in the box to say this is all you can enjoy? Somebody else? So anyway, there's, a, there's amazing things that our kids can teach us. So let's, we're going to jump in. Uh, the title of this morning's message is Taste and See. Psalms 34, verse 8. Psalms 34, verse 8. Now, this, um, this Psalms 34, it was written by David uh, after he acted insane in, in front of a king. Okay? Now, if you, if you read that account in 1 Samuel of David acting insane in front of a king, he left Saul... He got blessed by a priest. He took the sword of Goliath from that place, and he's going over, okay? He's going over to this other king, but on his way, it's, he finds out that the king where he's going to to take refuge in this kingdom, his servant said, David is coming, and you've heard it said that David, he killed, or Saul has killed the thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. So he, this comes to David on his way to go take refuge under this kingdom because Saul wants his life. He's like, I'm going to just go serve this king and it'll be cool, right? I got a covenant with Saul, who, Saul's son, Jesse, right? Or not Jesse, Saul's son. Uh, help me, Saul's son, Jonathan. So Saul, if you don't know the story about David, David was the one that God chose to be king, anointed, okay? If Saul was the one that people chose. God's the one, that, or so God actually chose Saul. Saul as well, but Saul betrayed what God said. He wasn't going to do his own way. And then God found David and brought him up as a shepherd boy. He kills Goliath. Here he comes. Yet he's anointed to be king. Yet he's walking in honor, and he's going to honor Saul as king. And he's honoring him in such a way that even his Saul's son, Jonathan, cuts covenant because he's he just knit in heart with David. So they're, they're, they're together in the house and they're serving one another. And even when David comes to the priest uh, to be blessed, it wasn't the first time. The priest blessed not only the, the king, but he also blessed the sons in the house. And the son was David, who was the son-in-law because he got the daughter of Saul, Mike, Michal, okay, for killing Goliath. So he's now grafted in as, as, as a line, but he's the son-in-law, and he's going to be anointed king. Yet now Saul sees the favor of God on his life. Saul, he's killed his thousand, but David's killed his ten thousand, and Saul wants him dead. Okay, So David's like, uh, I can't stay here any longer, but I need the blessing of the Lord to go. So he seeks a priest. This is, Saul, I think, uh, Samuel 21. 1 Samuel 21. So he seeks the priest, and the priest blesses him. And he says, do you have a sword? And he said, only the sword of Goliath, of which there's none other. So David takes that sword, and he goes to this other kingdom. And as on his way, he hears from this other people's servants, that, or this king's servants, that here, David's coming to you. And David, you know, he's the man, and, and he's great. And so he's on his way to the king, and this comes to him. And, all, and when David walks in before the king, he begins to sal sal salivate or foam at the mouth and act insane because that king was going to have his life. Now, how did David know that that was going to happen? I don't know. I would say somehow the Lord got it to him that he, there were the only way, the, how, do you gonna, how are you going to preserve yourself? Are you going to fight your way out of this one? What are you going to do? I, I don't know, act crazy? Okay, that's pretty humbling, but just act crazy. I mean, you're taking a shot in the dark? I don't think it's a shot in the dark. Not according to the Psalm 34, which was written out of a response when David act, acted crazy. And it talks all about, uh, let me, I, I'm, I'm setting up what we're getting to, even though I didn't know I was going to be setting it up this long. All right? Um, so in Psalms 34, this, is, uh, this is starts in verse 1. How bless the Lord at all times. His praise is going to be continually upon my lips. Why? Because he's, this is out of the response of him acting crazy before a king. Like, I don't, I don't see any way out. Here's the way out. That sounds crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. You're going to be a crazy madman, but I'm going to make a way when there is no way. Listen, so, but it was just hearing the Lord's direction right here. 
It says, I will bless the Lord um, at all times. His praise will be on my lips. My soul boasts in the Lord. Let the oppressed hear and rejoice. In other words, if, you, if you're heavy with something, let me just tell you, it looked impossible for me. But I want, you to, I want to tell you, listen, and you'll rejoice. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. Maybe you've heard the song. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And he answered, he delivered me from all my fears. Anyway, there's, I'm not very great at singing. Um, those who look to him are radiant with joy. Are, are, are you glowing? Because if you're looking to him, you'll be glowing. Their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man called out and the Lord heard him. He saved him from all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And he delivers them. Wow, this is just a... What, a, what He's just testifying, God preserve me, God. And here's what happened, okay? We're going to get to the next verse here in a moment. David goes to this king, and from that place, the king's like, don't, I don't want this insane man even coming into my house. Put him out. Put him out. Let him alone. So David goes to a forest, and, get, and, and men rally around him. And this is where, in a sense, David's army starts. David, da- David from a place of insanity... From a place of what looks impossible, looks crazy. And he, and he goes to a cave and he strengthens. And then the Lord said, Go, come, and I want to put you in this. It's just amazing. You just watch what God, what looked impossible. Let me just say, maybe you've heard of this. What the enemy meant for evil. Huh? God is working for my good. So where I see, so many, so many times um, we don't see God working because we have things that are just too good all around us. We can make our own provision. We can make our own way. We, don't, we want enough money, so we don't have to trust the Lord. We want all of these things. We're, we want to be free so we can be free. The Bible tells us that freedom to only be consumed upon ourselves is, is foolishness. My freedom is not just so that I can be free. Okay? Um, anyway, that's in Galatians. But, so here we go. Now verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. I want to just, uh, just hit taste and see that the Lord is good. Let's talk about taste this morning. Have you ever, um, you know, it's funny. We, we like to taste things, right? And we like other people to taste things. Oh, this brownie is so good. Taste it, right? We, we went to Hawaii a couple years back, or actually it was last year, um, and this is the one time I put something in my mouth. We went to this farm, and this guy that didn't wear shoes and had very long hair, and from it was just, he was awesome. Just no shirt, just uh, board shorts. He's walking around with a big machete. We go through this fruit orchard, and he's cutting things off of this you know, trees. And he's like, I'll try this. It's like, it's like amazing, man. It'll blow your mind. Like this is, oh, this is like, this tastes like the worst throw up, uh, foul smelling cheese. It makes your mouth go numb. You got to try some, man. Okay. You mean that rotting looking brain thing? Yeah. You see, these ones aren't ripe. They got to die first. Okay. He's like, yeah, you see how it's a little squishy? Yeah. He's like, you know, you can smell it. I'm like, yeah, I can smell it. I'm like eight feet from you. I can smell it. He's like, yeah, but man, this has amazing health benefits. So he's like, slice, slice, slice. And I'm like, I I don't know. I can't do that, man. And and, and this whole whole experience in Hawaii was on a 15-acre farm where this if you looked on uh, the, you know, TripAdvisor or something like that, it had five-star reviews out of 200 reviews. The guy just takes you around and out of thousands of different varieties of fruit, whatever's ripe in season, he's like, oh, this is ripe. Let's have a banana. Oh, have a coconut. Let's try this kind of mango. Let's try dragon fruit or whatever, just weirdest fruits that you can imagine. So fun. And, but you don't get big portions. There was five people and there would be one mango, Right? And so you're tasting about 100 different fruits, okay? Um, you trace juicy fruit, where they get the flavor juicy fruit gum. We tried the fruit that that fr- flavor originated from. Super cool, and you just chew it, and you chew it, and it just doesn't go away. But you just had a little chunk. And so here I am. You got to chew it up, and this was his, re- and you got to Swiss. This guy, he's like, he's, no, yeah, I was going to tell him what it was. It's noni. N O N I, noni. It means noni, 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 noni. Okay? That's, it's that bad. It, and so he's like, so he cuts out a piece 
and he puts it in his mouth, and he gives, he's like, now, the thing is, you got to chew it, and you got to swish it around so you can really get the taste, you know? And so he does it, and he's like, woo, mmm, you know? And, uh, and it was like, okay, he's been eating this all, the, all this time, and, all, and, and he's still doing that? This is going to be intense. So Evan puts it in, swallows it, and she's like, come on, babe, come on, babe. I'm like... I don't, I, I can tell it doesn't taste good, you know? So I finally I eat this vomit blue cheese. But it's not as good as blue cheese at all. Uh, and swish it in my mouth. And it does. Your mouth goes all tingly. And then by the time you swallow it, it does increase blood flow. And you go, whew, now I'm alive. That, that, doesn't it make you feel alive? It makes you feel alive. They actually had different weeds there that were... Well, lots of weeds. Um, lots of weeds. He's like, this one? Well, I don't know if you'd leave the farm. All right. Uh, so anyway, super fun. But you know what's funny is we like to taste things. And you know, we like to share them with others. And I want to just, this it says, taste and see, uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste, eat a small quantity Eat, t- this is what we're talking about stopping and smelling the roses. A small quantity so that you can perceive. Like, taste this. Uh, coffee. Oh, that has a taste of cocoa and uh, blah, 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 caramel and toffee. Have you ever seen that on those bags? Blueberries and citrus or berry and citrus. You're like, what? No, no, taste it. Oh, yeah, I can taste it through there. There's something, there's many things that we're missing because we're going through life at such a fast pace. We're not stopping and seeing all that God is doing all the time. And so what we're having other, what we're tasting all the time, we're not tasting, we're just like eating. We're just eating. And you know what we're eating a lot of times is just like what Pastor Evan was talking about this morning, the things that aren't nourishing. And you know what we're having other people taste? Yeah, man, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Tell me something good. Tell me something God is doing. Tell me how, uh, well, the tree died in the backyard. Now i got to get a tree service and a stump grinder, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's the only tree you have? You have 69 other trees. One died, but we're talking about the one. I'm just asking the question. Maybe, maybe we're, we're not living on the right scale because we don't know how to taste the things of God. Like, what is he, what, tell me what he's done for you. Tell me how you got up. I mean, this, is, this is not just about being glass half full. This is, this is, let it be unto you, let it be unto me according to what you said. This is about my expectation of good things. My expectation, when I look and I see he's been faithful and he's been faithful and he's been faithful and he's been faithful and and I'm recounting of how it looked like there was no way but God, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God. But I, I begin to taste and now I can perceive, and this is the thing, what would God want to do here? So this is what I'm talking about. Taste so you can see. So I know God, he, I, I, I've tasted and seen his goodness. I also see what the enemy would love to do. I see how the enemy is coming in here. So now I'm tasting because I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. I've tasted and seen. Now I can see what, when there's something that is evil, I can taste and say, what would the Lord want to do here? Yeah. Yeah. Good. In the beginning, when God created the heaven, his darkness was over the face of the earth. But he did not say, it sure is dark outside. He is the maker of heaven and the earth. Where does my help come from? I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? The maker. He is the maker of heaven and earth. He is the creator. So when I see something that's not right, because I've tasted and seen the goodness of God, now I can look and say, God, what do you want to do here? What do you want to do here? When I, in the supermarket... These are the hand, we are the messengers. When I'm in the supermarket, when I'm with a friend, when I'm, and something's not right because somebody's tasting of the wrong thing. I, because I've tasted of the Lord, I can say, God, what do you want to do here? 
Because I know what, how he works. Because I know that he's good. I've tasted of him. I've tasted of, and so this is what's important is that I know what is, I know what's right. How many of you have ever had milk? How many of you ever had bad milk? How do you know that it's bad? How do you know that that's not the stuff that you should be drinking? Lake and Smith, milk kefir. Lord Jesus. All right. We're, uh, Levi, Levi's like, man, it's, 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 but it's so good. The health benefits, right? The health benefits. Why do the things that are good for you sometimes not taste the best? All right, let's keep going here. So eating a, so that we can perceive. So it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalms 34, 8. Taste and see, taste and see that the Lord is good. So there's something about you and I looking at the little things that allows you and I to see so that we can navigate the next thing. How many of you know it's really tough to walk through life with no vision? You know, it's really tough to walk through life with somebody else's vision, too. You ever had that? You know those trust things? Okay, okay, yep, go straight, go straight, go straight. But... They don't tell you to lift up your foot right there. there. There's so many. You can't live by somebody else's vision. You're not intended to. He says, taste and see the Lord is good. Listen to this. Psalms 34, 8 out of the Young's literal translation. Taste you or taste ye and see that Jehovah, the Lord, the Lord, the provider, the Jehovah, Jehovah, the one that he, he introduces himself of who he's going to be to you. Okay, you got to understand that you see in the Old Testament there's there's Elohim or there's there's Jehovah. Jehovah is when he's talking about who I am to you, not just me being God, but who I am to you. Taste and see that who I am to you is good. When he first time he ever you introduced his name to the people of God, the Israelites or the Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel, all right, the people of God covenant, he introduced himself and he says, I am Jehovah Jireh. What is that? Your provider. I am Jehovah Nisi. What is it? Come on, somebody help me out. Your victory. Well, I'm Jehovah Rapha. Help. What is this? The Lord that heals thee. I am Jehovah Sick Canoe. Help me out. I mean, we could go through these. Yeah, righteousness. What you're saying, what is that? I don't know. I don't know. Well, it would be good for us to know who God says he is. And get to know him for who he says he is instead of who somebody else introduced him to be. But here he's saying, here's who I'm going to be to you. This is, again, the Young's literal translation, which just takes literal, the literal Hebrew or Greek tra- word and puts it just boom, boom, boom. All right? So now here it is. Taste you or taste ye and see that Jehovah is good. Oh, the happiness. Here's how we usually read it. Blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. It said, this, if you look up that word blessed, it just says, oh, so happy. So, so yeah. And again, I'm talk, talking about taste and see. I'm talking about living on the 80 scale. Okay? Because that's how you and I are to have, a, our faces are to shine. You're the light of the world. You know, part of, um, you know, you're the light of the world, city set on a hill. This is Matthew. Sometimes he says, he says, don't put a put it under a bushel, right? Um, can I say this? You know what a bushel is? It's just an upside down pit. Did you know a pit is just as bad as a bushel? Like you, okay, the, you're the light of the world. A city set on a hill. Who lights a lamp in the house? And doesn't put it on a candle stand. He said, "Puts a bushel. Don't put it under a bushel. But instead, put it on the lamp stand. Why does he say not to put a bushel over it? Because it doesn't give the light that it's intended to. The same way, a pit. If you as I take that same light and put it in a pit, is it going to light like it's supposed to? No. Worries, cares, all of these things. Not happy. Pit. All right. So anyway, he, he uh, says this: Taste and see that the Lord Jehovah is good. Oh, the happiness of the man." Who trusts in him? Psalms 119, 103. So, uh, again, we're talking about tasting. What, what, are, what are you and I to be tasting? Are we to be tasting? We're, so many times we're looking for big things. 
instead of the little things. We're going to get to, we're going to look at how God's little things produce the big things. Okay? His words. Psalms 119. How sweet are your words to my taste? Sweeter than the honey than honey in my mouth. What's what's the sweetness? Oh, when my ship comes in? What's the sweetness when there's just some I don't know like major victory to where, well, let's just turn there. Let's turn to 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19. This is the story of Elisha. Now, have you ever wanted God to just show up in just a way that would blow your mind and blow everybody's mind? Okay, not only me. Okay, good. I saw like two nods. But maybe you would want God to show up in some mighty way. Anybody want God to show up in some mighty way? Even still, want God to, yeah, me too. So this is what was happening where we're going to find out whose God is God. We're going to find out who's God. And so you have this King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. And, and there's all these, uh, all of their mus- uh, magicians and, and other gods, right, that the people of God or the children of Israel are serving. And here the prophet Elisha, or Elijah rather, comes and says, this is not good anymore. Or we, need to, we need to serve God. And they said, well, who's God? This is just paraphrasing. And they said, why don't we call out to, you pray to your God, I'll pray to my God. We'll see who answers you know, for fire from heaven. And so they built an altar and they both built altars. They built an altar and danced around it. Elijah starts making fun of them because their God's not answering. Is he asleep? What's going on? He says, okay, well, my altar here, why don't you uh, dig a moat around it and fill it up with water uh, to where, I mean, it can't be said in any other way. It's going to have to be God. And he asks the Lord, hey, God, I would ask that you would show up. Whew. Where's the rocks? Where there's no water and there's no wood. It's consumed. Elijah says, kill all the musician, magicians. Kill all the, kill them all. So they're all killed. I mean, you talk about a great victory of God. I mean, could, could there be any greater response? I, I pray to, boom, fire, just wow, shows up, just all I, and, and I didn't do anything other than just God wow, moved in a supernatural way. Big win. And then something happens. Something happens. That big win did not sustain him. Let me say this. Victory will not sustain you. A vacation will not sustain you. A raise will not sustain you. The biggest, greatest thing you could imagine, buying, having, these things don't sustain you. They can't sustain you. As a man of God, as a woman of God, as a child of God, you will not be satisfied or be able to, you can't go from victory to victory. You, victory to victory, you know, like from faith to faith, victory to victory. It, what, what, from faith to faith, faith produces the victory. We're so many times we're looking for the, the top without the roots. When I have a top that's green, but I have no roots, it doesn't last. It's done. And, and here, here is Elijah where King Ahab comes back and he says, now Ahab, because there had been a, a drought in the land for seven years. Okay? And now he says, hey Ahab, the rain's coming now. So God has his way. He shows up. Hey, get ready. Get your chariot and your horse and get back because it's about to rain. This is found in Psalms 18 into 19. Okay, So we just talked about the, the, the consuming of the fire, all this kind of stuff. Now the judgment has been gone. The people of God are now turned back to God okay, to serve him. And he says, hey, it's about to rain. And so Ahab comes back to Jezebel and tells of everything that happened. Like, we got rain, baby. And all the, we're serving God. We're not serving the, the other ones. We're, and we got rain. Look what's happened. And Jezebel's not happy. And she says in verse, uh, chapter one, or chapter, or verse 1 of 19 that she's going to kill um, 
or verse 2, 1 and 2, uh, that she's going to kill Elijah. Uh, I'm going to kill him. Wow. And you know what Elijah says? Oh, I wish I was dead. And he flees. Where's his boldness? Where's the, where, what happened? Yeah. A different word. Victory to victory. And so here he runs, and, and he, he goes and takes refuge under a broom tree, falls asleep. And, but yet the Lord doesn't leave him. Isn't that cool? You, the Lord doesn't leave. Yeah. And he takes refuge in, in an angel or a messenger. Hello? Did you know you can be an angel? Angel translated messenger. You know you can be a messenger carrying to somebody the provisions of God. We talked about this a little bit this morning in our, in our huddle. But the provisions of God are, are, are accessed when you simply find out what he says. And so here this angel shows up, uh, the angel of the Lord. It says uh, he, 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 gets, he gets him something to eat and uh, does it a second time. And he says, you're going to need this for your journey. And so Elijah goes uh, and, and goes and hides himself in a cave. 40 days away. Just as far removed from God's direction and his plan as he could bring himself. And God shows up even there. Showed up on his way. Maybe you've been there where you feel like I'm as far from God as I've ever been. And yet I'm, yet he's still talking to me. How do I get back? I need God to move mightily. That's what I need. I need God to do just something awesome. So here I am in a cave and the Lord, he's t- talking to God. And here's what he says. He's feeling sorry for himself. We've never, I've never done that. You might have, but me? me? Uh, So we're going to pick up in verse 9. Elijah entered uh, 19.9, 1 Kings 19.9. Elijah entered a cave and spent the night, and the word of the Lord came into him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? So the Lord's like, Hey, what what are you doing here? Like, where's your purpose here? Where's your purpose there? Where's your purpose where, where, where you're going? Where's your purpose in what you're pursuing? This, this could, there's sometimes there's things like we've talked about in Mark chapter 4 that we're, we're pursuing, but let me ask you this. Where's your purpose there? Where, and and who, who said that's your purpose there? Sometimes we want to pursue something well and say, well, I'm going to pursue this and then I can do that there. Who said? Because, see, I don't determine my own purpose. I discover it. Right? Because I've been bought. Right? And I was created. Anyway, recreated if, if you're giving your life to the Lord. Anyway, it goes on to say this. What are you doing here? Verse 10, it says, uh, Elijah's response to the Lord. I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, he replied. But the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am the only one left, and they are seeking my life as well. Then the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Behold, the Lord is about to pass by. And a great and mighty wind tore into the mountains and shattered the rocks. Now, I've seen wind blow buildings down. I've seen wind blow trees down. Have you seen wind blow rocks over? Like mountains down? That's some wind, isn't it? That's some power. That's like fire from heaven consuming the altar power. But the Lord was not in the wind. The Lord is what sustains you and me. The Lord is not in the wind. The Lord is not, let me say this, take the D off. The Lord is not in the wind. The Lord's not in the wind. So many say, we just want the wind. We want the wind. The Lord's not in the wind. He's not just in the wind. And we just want to go from wind to wind to wind to wind. And if we, we don't know what to do, when we're, uh, if we find ourselves in a valley... Because we don't know what brought the peak. What brings the peak is the Lord. Who sustains me in the valley is the Lord. Is the Lord. 
is the Lord, is the Lord. So I've learned the secret, Paul said. Whether I have a lot or I have a little, here's the secret. God, I can do all things through Christ who's given me strength. No matter what it looks like, no matter the report that comes from me and coming for me, they're going to eat you. They're going to kill you. They're going to hurt you. Did you hear the report? Did you hear the report? Did you hear this word? Did you hear this word? I heard it all, but I got a secret. Let me... Uh, tones of coffee and toffee, not coffee, toffee and rich dark chocolate. How, how did you get that? Oh, I tasted. I, I got to, oh, I, I tasted. I slowed down enough to find the secret. I got a secret. Here's the secret. I've learned the secret. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. When I look and I see all the little things, I see that the tree, God is giving strength. I see that the fish that just bit my hook, God has given strength. When I look into the water and see all that stuff, I say, wow, God, look, just as they, you're sustaining everything. You're the maker, the creator, the sustainer of everything. I'm seeing a secret here that no matter what, I, what life holds, he holds life. Wow, that's kind of cool that there's a secret that comes from tasting and that God's not in the wind. He's not in the wind. He's, he is, well, let's keep reading here. There was an earthquake. Then there was an earthquake. This is uh, middle of verse 11. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. You know, like, can you just, God's just power, earth shaken, but they didn't sense presence. Didn't, there was no presence there. After the earthquake, there was fire. But the Lord was not, where? He wasn't in the fire. But then after that, there was something that was a, after the fire came a still, getting quiet, shh, small voice. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the mountain in the cave. And suddenly a voice came to him and said, Elijah, what are you doing here? And he says and recounts the same thing. I've been very zealous for you. And the Lord says, okay, he, oh, let me just read it. Lord, I've been very zealous for you, but the, Isra the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. I'm the only one left. They're seeking my life as well. Then the Lord said to him, go back your way and go to the desert. I, I feel like there's mis verses missing here. There's, there's not. I feel like there's verses missing here, like, like are you going to make him repent? Are you going to make him, like the Lord's like, the word of the Lord comes back to him and just says, go, just purpose, direction, provision, life, fulfillment, passing on. Elijah's found, from Elijah, excuse me, Elisha's found, the anoint, like just fulfillment. What was it found? In a still small voice? Purpose, you know how it was found? A still small voice? All the provision necessary, you know how it was found? A little voice. You know how you find that little voice? And this is where uh, something that I, I've, I've spoken on just maybe it's been a month ago now because I've been gone for uh, a couple weeks here. Um, you're doing too much thinking and not enough listening. You're doing too much thinking how many of you have had too many, have I had a lot of things going on at different seasons? You know, it's just a season, it's a season. And I said, no, it's not a season. It's a choice. Right. These aren't seasons, these are choices. It's, it's, it's a choice. So if things, are, if things are chaotic, make a choice to say, we're going to put pause on that. You know, have you ever had, can you just turn the car, can you just turn the volume down? Just, does somebody just turn... What did you just do? You just silenced some of the noise. But that didn't silence what was actually going on while you had to turn the radio down. You know what I'm talking about? But you can make a choice to press pause on that. You can make a choice to say, you know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to slow down. And I'm going to taste and see the small, the small things. Taste. It doesn't say eat. It says taste. And see that the Lord is good. The still small voice. We're talking about looking and learning to be led by the, as a child of God. The Bible says in Romans, the children of God are led by the Spirit of God. As a child of God, if, you have, if you've believed on the Lord Jesus and you've confessed him as Lord, given your, 
then, then guess what? He says, you, you've been recreated, and your spirit that was once dead to him is now made alive in Christ. And his spirit dwells in you. And he bears witness with, so there's communion. There's not like this far off, like, God, speak to me. No, it's called get quiet. Yeah. Be still. A still, small voice. Listen, what he has to say. And I, I, I believe we need to move back as the church. We need to move back to the still, small voice. We need to move back to that still, small voice. Because that still, small voice, if we'll listen for it, it has a lot of things to say to individuals. And you know, people are begging for God to be seen in you, where he dwells. He dwells. He's made his dwelling place in us. But we have to learn to be still instead of going, the thing, the thing, the thing, the thing, the thing. And listen, I'm the pot calling the kettle black on this one. I have uh, so many times too many things going on. So many times I have this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And, I'm, I, and I play the Martha role. And, but Jesus told Mary, hey, she chose what was right because what was given her can't be taken away. And what I heard in my heart is it can't be taken away, but it can be given away. See, here's the thing um, about a garden. My parents have a giant garden. There's only two of them. And they have one like three times the size of ours crazy. Mom and dad, I love it. You know why they do it? Because they just want to give it away. They have potatoes, like this whole, like basically this whole room is potatoes. And that's not the corn. The corn is three times the potatoes. And it's planted like in in session. So we're going to harvest corn for a month and a half. Watermelons and beets and everything you can imagine. Tomatoes and, and the ground is black and fertile and there's no Bermuda grass. So it's easier to tend. But the whole thing is Mark chapter 4. When the sower sows the word, when the word is sown, immediately Satan comes for what? The word. Oftentimes, and this is why he said, you're doing too much thinking and not enough listening. It's, it's like when I'm talking to you and say, you know, or you're watching the football game and your wife says, hey, you know, uh, this is at 5 o'clock today. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's 4.45 now it's 4.45 and, you're like, and she's like, uh, you're not ready yet. Like, what are you talking about? But you answered her and you acknowledged the word from your spouse. Many times we're acknowledging the word of God, but we're not doing anything with it because there's other things going on, lots of things going on. And it's that still small voice. It's that, see, the word, the word that comes to us that when we take and we tend that word, take and tend that word. So Satan can't take it. So instead of being a Martha, now instead of having that seed snatched from me because I have so many things going on. Martha, Martha, you're troubled about many things. Mary has chosen the good part because what she has taken. How many of you know that Jesus, when he's in the house, Martha's busy, Mary's sitting, Jesus is talking. You can be you can be sweeping the floors and I can be talking. You can be in the lobby right now and you can hear what I'm saying. You can be sitting and hearing what I'm saying. But Mary was receiving what God was saying. What happened was it can't be taken away. But now, because it was received, it can be given away. And your and my life is to bring fruit. We find fulfillment in being fruitful. I, have you ever given somebody something that just blessed your heart? There was, a, there was a couple kids at the end of our driveway that just happened recently in the last couple months where we were able to give a basketball goal that they thought was from the NBA. And they're just like, oh my gosh, this glass back. Oh God. And you know, my boys are like, oh, that's, what, that's, be, that's the best ever. Yeah. Why, what's the best ever? That, what, what did they get? Fulfillment of what? Purpose. Why? Because there was an outflow of fruit. It came from hearing a still small voice of driving by the road, seeing the basketball that was there laid over in the wind, even though it was two months earlier, three months earlier, where it was mentioned, oh, still small voice. 
You need to, you need to move on that. You need to get them a basketball goal. My kids, this is from to my kids saying this. We should get them a basketball goal. Okay, let's do it. A couple months goes by. You see the kids out there again playing. No ball, no goal. Uh, actually, it was a little tight goal. We need to get them. We never got them the basketball goal. You know, God's words, you can still tend them. That's just so cool. You can miss it, and he's still there. You can come back and you can, you can steward that. Wow. And, and so we got this basketball goal and we fixed it up and we made it. And we had glass cleaner cleaning the glass and wake, just um, when we brought it there. It, and it was everything. What was? I thought it was if I got the basketball goal. I thought it was if I had. It was listening and tending the still small voice. Everything's found there. Everything. So I wanted to close by, by ac- some application uh, of this. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a couple verses and then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna apply it. I'm only going to read Proverbs 3. Um, now I'm going to read it and you can, you, in, in context. It says, my son, do not forget my teaching. Do not forget what I've said, but let, but let your heart keep them. For they will add length to your days, years and peace to your life. Keep loving devotion and faithfulness bound around your neck. Write my words on the tablet of your heart. In doing so, you will find favor and high regard in the sight of men. So this is how you do it. You trust in the Lord with all your heart. And you don't lean on your own understanding. Instead, you acknowledge me. You taste in every way. And I'll bring direction to your paths. And I'll straighten out the things that look crooked and broken. So don't be wise in your own eyes, but instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will bring healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. I said it like this earlier, where there is direction, there is provision. When I hear not here. When I hear, when I get quiet and I say, Lord, what do you say here? What do you say here? What do you say here? I'll find that not only is there life, there's provision, there's peace, there's all those things that we just recanted. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When there are competing thoughts, I don't have I don't have, I don't hold, I haven't received wisdom. When there's competing thoughts, when I don't have God's word over any other word, when there's competing thoughts, I'm not holding wisdom. I'm not holding wisdom. And if I'm not holding wisdom, it's because I don't fear the Lord. I fear whatever other word is being said. And what I fear, I trust. And what I trust, I make decisions in life. Bye. So if there's competing thoughts, I don't have God's wisdom. If I don't have God's wisdom, it's because I don't have the fear of the Lord there. I have some other word that I'm holding in higher regard. And whatever I fear the most, I will trust or make decisions by. What are you making decisions by? Because of fear. Let's get that out of there. Let's get quiet. Let's look and see that the Lord is good. Let's look at the little thing. When I see an impossibility, I can get quiet and I can say, God, okay, I see this, I see that, but I'm going to take a time to taste and get quiet and ask you 
What do you want to do here? What do you say? What do you say here? And I'll tell you, when you grab a hold of that and you take that and you put that in your heart and you put that as number one, life. We just read peace to your days, joy to your, oh. And then even in the valley, you, you have a secret. Oh, I can do all things through Christ. In the waiting, which is oftentimes the hardest place to be in, you, ha- you, you find what you're trusting. In the waiting, I, fo- I found what I was trusting. And I, what I find oftentimes in the waiting, I find that I'm not trusting the right thing. And I, I have the opportunity to, to bring the right thing back to the top. And that's what we're going to just do today. We're going to stand. We're just going to get quiet before the Lord. And we're just going to ask the Lord. Every one of you knows there's things that are going on in your, in your life. There's decisions. There's, there's reports. There's, there's noise. Everyone has noise in some way. And we're just going to ask the Lord, what do you say? Thank you, Lord. And you're not going to say, you're going to answer that thought that I don't hear from the Lord. You know, I, I struggle to hear from him. I, I mean, I could just hear somebody saying that right here. You're going to answer that thought with the word of God. And you're going to say, no, I'm a child of God. I know your voice. I know your voice. So, Father, we thank you today that we know your voice. And you said in James that if anyone lacks wisdom, he says, this is this passage, he says, if you lack wisdom, ask, because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He's saying, get my word. Father, I thank you that you said that we could ask for wisdom. We could ask for your word, and you would give it. And so today, we're going to exercise that privilege to simply ask you for wisdom concerning every area of our life. So I just want to get quiet right now, and I want you to ask him. I'm going to do the same thing. And you can just continue to play. We're going to just take a moment for the Lord to give you that clear, small word. Thank you, Father. greatest practices 
and you get quiet and you hear those words, is journaling what he said. There was things spoken. Even just now, just a little, maybe it's a little phrase, like one of the words I, I heard so clearly when I asked the Lord, my timing is perfect. So, you know, writing that down, that's, that's one of my declarations. God's timing is perfect. So when I have an assault, God's timing is perfect. Why? Because I heard him speak that to my heart. And it's so important. This is a practice. This is a, you could call it a spiritual discipline, learning, just journaling the voice of the Lord. When you ask him a question, you, he hears and he answers. This is what David, David said in Psalm 34. I taste, taste of the Lord. He is good. What did he say? I called to the Lord. He heard and he answered. When he came before the king, it looked impossible. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I was afraid. I didn't know what to do. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. And writing those things down so that you can hold them in your heart. Amen. And I just heard um, as we were standing there, you know, devices are a tool to be great. But there's something, we were just talking about this actually, but there's something about um, creation that speaks of God's glory and splendor. And so I just heard for some of you, like, taste and see, or like he said, stop and smell the roses. Like, just putting your device down and get outside, which sounds funny. Even maybe looking out your window, I don't know, at birds or trees or whatever. But just, there's something about just um, putting, you know, these, like I said, can be great things. But this can also be a tool that gets you, like he talked about, of, of comparison. Well, they have this and I don't. Or they said their family looks picture perfect and mine's not. Or whatever it might be. But getting out and pausing and reflecting and putting away a device and just being in something God created for man. Do you know he made it for you? The trees, the oceans, the mountains, the sky, the birds, like everything outside, like we walk through life so like this. That we're, I mean, there are several times on our trip where I'm like, boys, put down your phone and look out the window. Just look out the window. Because you see things that God made. He'll speak through those little things to you. And some, some of those times, I mean, that's why I love, like if I can get outside and go on a walk or go on a run, I get so much just because you're not distracted with things and you're just hearing him in what he created to bless you. And you know what's awesome too is a lot of times what you'll find is you'll see that bird and God will say something or you'll see the sky. Just yesterday we were out and I was like, wow, look at the white thunderheads. Like it, it just was so pretty with the clouds. And you know what it causes you to do? Really taste and see that he's good. It causes you to go, wow, God, you're so good. It really causes you to be thankful. And there's a key in thankfulness with tasting and seeing and hearing God's voice, like just being thankful and then allowing God to speak to you. But I just heard that so strongly, like for some of you, the answer is just taking some time every day to just put that down and just get outside or look outside and just, Lord, what are you, what do you want to show me today? You know, Amen. be present. You know, you, you hear about just, I'm going to quote a country song since I started already. Every time I hear that song, I go back right? You didn't go back to a picture that you took and captured with your phone. You went back to a time or something that you was captured in your heart because you were present there. And so even as you like on summer, I know a lot of people have gone on vacations and stuff like this summer. If you have kids, you're maybe fixing to go, um, man, be present. Be present with your family. Be present with your people. Be present with, and, and this is why we gather um, not just to sit and appear to he hear, hear something and, and leave, but just to be present. And um, I just, again, encourage you with that same thing. So anyway, taste and see. The Lord is good. Have the secret. No matter what's going on, there's a secret. And Paul said in Philippians that I can do all things. How? Through Christ who strengthens me. On a valley or in a valley or on a mountaintop, God's sustaining me. The little things tasting and seeing them. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys as you uh, as you go today. Before I close, um, 
Uh, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, man, I would love to see someone give their life to Jesus every service, maybe online, or, or, or but in, the, in this house, as we're being a church that is active beyond the four walls, I believe it'll happen more and more. Um, but if you're here today and you don't know Jesus and you've never given your life to him, I want to give that opportunity to just receive him, to, to call upon his name and be and have salvation today. If that's you, you don't know that where you'd spend eternity, I want to just give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Is there anyone? Go ahead and lift your hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, one of the greatest prayers is not so much always for the people of God. It's not always a prayer of Dedic or you know rededication or all that kind of stuff. It's just of consecration. So sometimes we can be discouraged as a, as a leader or a pastor when you don't see people raise their hands because people are saved. How discouraging is that? <laughs> I mean, come on, right? But sometimes in those moments, um, I've asked I've asked the Lord like, how how do I deal with that? He said, don't move over those moments and miss the opportunity that you have a moment. And that moment that I was that he, that I he spoke to my heart is take those moments to instead of rededication make them because sometimes we use this word rededication like okay I've sinned greatly I've walked away from God but maybe that's not the case but but we need to make a prayer of consecration where we just say God I'm all yours I just I want you to know whatever you want to do with me wherever you want me to go whatever you want me to say whatever you want me to get, Lord I'm yours. And take that opportunity so that I can be God to my people. So we're going to do that this morning. Father, uh, and I'm just going to lead you in a prayer of consecration. You can make it your own. You can uh, re repeat it with me or however you want it. Father, today we say with our mouths, we are yours. We are yours to command. Wherever you want us to go, whatever you want us to do, whatever you want us to say, we're available. Thank you for being my God. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for directing my steps. Thank you for never leaving and never forsaking. Thank you that when I call, you answer and I hear you. I am yours, Lord. Get yourself glory through my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys today. We'll see you Wednesday night. Uh, other than that, enjoy this cool summer day. <laughs>